we're going local on US1. Come on, let's go. Alright everyone, today I am doing US1 here in North Carolina and Virginia. The reason I'm just doing US1 in North Carolina and Virginia is because I, I live along the US1 corridor. And I used to live in Virginia along the US1. So, today I'm going to be sharing with you a whole bunch of fun places that you can visit if you're ever on US1 here in the Raleigh area and along a couple other places up in the Fredericksburg area. So let's get started with US1. If you've been enjoying my highest content or any of my other content, be sure to hit that like button and smash that subscribe button so you're notified all of all my future highways videos. And guess what? I'm now open to extra requests. All the future highways that I'm going to be doing are listed down in the description below. So if you want any extra requests in the, for the future highways, be sure to look down in the description and put your request down in the comment section below and I'll make sure to shout you out. Let's get started with the highway. As you can see here, this is our map of US Highway 1 and we're just doing US 1 in the states of North Carolina and Virginia. So with that, we're going to be talking about northbound US 1. So we begin here at the North Carolina and South Carolina border on northbound US 1 and North Carolina is welcoming us into the state and Richmond County, so North Carolina. Our first major junction here in Rockingham, North Carolina is US Highway 74. And this is also Interstate 74, but North Carolina is not telling us this. And that is a good thing because Interstate 74 should not exist here in North Carolina. And now we're moving to US Highway 220, and 220 continues north of here into Greensboro and the state of Pennsylvania and a whole bunch of other states. While we're going to be continuing north on US 1 towards Sanford, Raleigh, and Virginia. In our first mileage sign on US 1, we get Aberdeen 16 miles away, and Sanford is 48. We cross this road in Raleigh here, which is about 90 miles away, and if Virginia can sign their capital from 90 miles away, so can North Carolina. And now we're meeting the 15501 here in Aberdeen. And north of the 15501 junction, US 1 actually becomes a freeway here, and this is our first exit. Exit 42 for Southern Pines. And now we're meeting North Carolina 24 and 27. And like I said in the 24 27 video, this I believe is a great sign going northbound on US 1 because you can get to Willington and Fayetteville from here. But not so much on southbound US 1. Now we're meeting the 15501 once again, and US 15501 and 1 are going to continue north to Sanford. And this is our first exit on the freeway portion, and it's for business US 1 in North Carolina Highway 42. We get to the awesome control cities of Asheboro and Pequay Verena. And we get our first exit request of the video, and it's made by Real Tony 123 He wanted to see US 421 in the US 1 junction here in Sanford. And it looks like US 421 gets some pretty good control cities here. It gets north for Siler City and Greensboro which is great because US 421 heads towards Greensboro and 421 South for Lillington, which is also a pretty sizable town in Eastern North Carolina. And once we leave Sanford on our next mileage line, we get Apex on the top line, 26 miles away, and Raleigh, 39 miles away. Now we're getting to the part of US 1 where I've been on many, many times, too many times that I can't count on my fingers. And this here is exit 89, which takes you over to Sharon Harris Lake and Jordan Lake, along with South Point Mall in Durham. This road here turns into North Carolina 751, which takes you, like I said, into South Point Mall. Now we're meeting the Triangle Expressway on North Carolina 540, and US 1 gets an overhead pull through for Raleigh, which is absolutely correct. And now we're meeting 1010 Road, and you know what the funny thing about this road is? You know why it's called 1010? Because North Carolina in their DOT plans has this road called State Route 1010. So 1010. That's why it's called 1010 Road. Now we're meeting US Highway 64, and it's time was for Pittsburgh and Ashboro, and we're also going to be meeting Cary Parkway in one mile. And right after that uh, US 64 junction, we get our next mileage sign, Raleigh on the top line at 9 miles away. And Wake Forest is now 28 miles away, so Wake Forest is our next control city. I don't know about that, you could probably
probably either do Wake Forest and or Henderson. Or you can have both Wake Forest and Henderson on there. We are meeting Exit 99, Cary Parkway, which is the city of Cary's own parkway. And yes, it travels throughout the entire city. Now I'm meeting Exit 101, which is for Walnut Street and Buck Jones Road. And the Crossroads Shopping Center is literally located right off this exit here. And there's a whole bunch of different sh shops you can shop at, including Best Buy, Home Goods, Hobby Lobby, Dick's Sporting Goods, Marshalls, Target, Home Depot, Lowe's, Home Improvement. And there's also a whole bunch of restaurants you can eat at, including Olive Garden, Red Robin, Burger Fi, Panera, and a whole bunch of more. I recommend checking this place out if you ever come to Raleigh. Now I'm reading Interstate 40, and Interstate 40 gets the abysmal control cities for eastbound for Benson and Rocky Mount. That Benson should be Wilmington. And 40 West is per is alright, signed for RDU Airport in Durham. Now we're going to be joining Interstate 440, and we're signed north for Wake Forest, which is absolutely correct. And here is uh, Exit 2, which takes you over to NC State. Now I'm North Carolina Highway 54, which also takes you to NC State and Meredith College. Now I'm in Exit 4, which is Wade Avenue, and if you head west on Wade Avenue, you're going to be turning into the Wade Avenue Freeway, which takes you to a whole bunch of different places, including Carter Friendly Stadium, PNC Arena, Interstate 40, and RDU Airport. But if you head east on Wade Avenue, you're going to be turning onto a surface street, and that surface street actually takes you to downtown Raleigh and a place called Mojo's Burger Joint, which is a place that I recommend because I always enjoyed their burgers. And I always go there after I either go to the Museum of Natural Sciences or the Natural History Museum in downtown Raleigh. Now I'm in US Highway 70 in North Carolina 50, which is signed for Crabtree Valley in Durham. And on this exit is the Crabtree Valley Mall, one of the major two malls here in the area, the other being South Point Mall. And I recommend you checking out Crabtree if you ever come to Raleigh because it's a multi-level mall with a whole bunch of different shops. Every time I go to the mall, I always go to the one in South Point, but I have been to Crabtree a couple of times. Now here is US-1 splitting off from US-401 and it's signed for Wake Forest in Lewisburg. The reason Lewisburg is on there is because of US-401. Now here's the split with US-401 and US-401 is signed north for Rollsville and Lewisburg. Well, we're heading north towards Wake Forest and Henderson. Also, I did a video on US-401 and you can check it out right up here. And here's a cool thing that I did not know North Carolina do. They have this rare 1A shoe. I think it's for US-1 alternate, and normally they would just do a North alternate US-1 instead of 1A. Because I think 1A is like a Northeastern thing or something. And once we're north of that, we need to turn back into a freeway. And our first exit is for North Carolina 98, which is signed for Wake Forest and Durham. And at random intersections, US-1 is signed for South for Raleigh and North for Henderson. Now we're meeting US Highway 158 and 158 and US 1 are current with each other as they head through Henderson. And here we can literally see right next to Interstate 85, just through these trees. And now here is US 158 joining US 401 South, while US 401 North is going to be joining US 1 for the rest of its journey, but not US 1's journey. Now we're meeting Interstate 85, which is signed south for Henderson and north for Petersburg. Once upon a time, that Interstate 85 north used to be for Richmond. Yes, North Carolina used to sign something for Richmond, but sadly they changed it to Petersburg. I don't know why North Carolina got did that, but Richmond was a very good choice for Interstate 85. Now we're entering into the state of Virginia, and this is in 2008 Street View. And this Virginia welcome sign looks awesome. Sadly, it has been replaced with this monstrosity. The welcome to Virginia sign we all know and love today. And our first major junction in Virginia is US Highway 58. And US 1 and 58 are going to be concurrent with each other for a short time. And our first mile of time in Virginia, we get Richmond on 
on the bottom line for US 1, which is 83 miles away, and US 58 bottom line is for Norfolk, which is 121 miles away. Here is US 1 splitting off from US 58 to, to head towards South Hill. And South Hill, we're meeting Interstate 85 once again. And this time, Virginia is signing 85 South for Durham, which is absolutely correct, but North for Petersburg. Again, that should be Richmond, not Petersburg. But here on US 1, our bottom line is still Richmond, which is 73 miles away. On our way to Petersburg, we're passing right by Interstate 85's Davis Travel Plaza. Yes, both Interstate 85 and 95 have their own Davis Travel Plaza. The other location is somewhere in northeastern Richmond, I don't remember where. And here are meeting Business US 460 and Business 460 and US 1 and beacon with each other as we head north towards downtown Petersburg. Oh, we're going to be talking about Dinwiddie when we get to southbound US 1, just you wait. And here in Petersburg, we actually passed by this Hardee's right at the US 1 and 85 junction. And I remember stopping at this Hardee's on one of the many road trips heading back home to Fredericksburg from my grandparents' house in Fuquay. We stopped here at this Hardee's one time to get some lunch. Now we're meeting Interstate 85, and 85 South is correctly for Durham. Well, 85 more just gets to Interstate 95, because we're about like 5 miles south of 95 from here. Now we're in downtown Petersburg, and uh-oh, what happened to the US-1 shield? We're just signed north for US-301. Oh no! But don't worry, US-1 reappears when we join US-301, and this is here in Chester, Virginia, or mean Virginia Highway 10. Do you know what the difference between Chester, Virginia and Chester, Pennsylvania is? Chester, Virginia is not signed on Interstate 95. And you should take a lesson from this, Pennsylvania. Don't sign Chester. I mean, on Virginia 288, the Western Richmond Beltway. And we just get 295 for its control city and 2 US 360. Now I mean the Chippenham Parkway, one of the few toll roads here in the Richmond area. And US 1 and 301 get signed north for Richmond. Now we're meeting US 360 right next to this church's chicken place. Now we're meeting US 60 before we enter into downtown Richmond itself. And sadly we get no direct access to Virginia Highway 195. The reason why it's one Virginia 195 instead of Interstate 195 is because of the toll. And sadly you can't build interstates as toll roads. They can only be migrated in if there was an old enough toll road. Here is downtown Richmond, and out of the two years that I've lived up in Fredericksburg, I never actually got to visit downtown Richmond. I'd gladly like to go back up to Virginia and visit Richmond one day. Now we're meeting Interstate 95 and Interstate 64, which is signed for Petersburg and Norfolk. So, now north of that 95-64 junction, US-1 splits off from US-301. And US-1 is now meeting Interstate 295, which is signed north for Charlottesville, and South 295 is signed for Norfolk and Rocky Mount. I'm sure Norfolk is absolutely correct, but Rocky Mount is eh. Now we're meeting Virginia Highway 54 in Ashland, and here in the Ashland area, we now get another mileage sign, Fredericksburg, which is 40 miles away. Washington on the bottom line at 90, which I think is the correct choice. An intersection request made by Porter Monch 487. He wanted to see Virginia Highway 30 because Virginia 30 actually takes you over to the King's Dominion Water Park. Sadly, it's closed right now due to not being water park season, but it will reopen when it gets warmer outside. And about 30 miles from the Virginia. 30 Junction, we enter into Spotsylvania County, the county that I called home for a couple years of my life. And our first junction in Spotsylvania County is Secondary Route 606, which is the road that I use sometimes to get home from road trips from my grandparents. This is cool here. Apparently, the Spotsylvania County gets its own parkway, so that's cool. 
Now I mean US Highway 17 and US 117 are currently with each other as we head towards Interstate 95. And here's Secondary Route 711, which takes you over to a Walmart, a Buffalo Walgreens, and Virginia Highway 208. Now remaining Interstate 95, and US 17 is going to be joining Interstate 95 North to head towards Warrington and Washington, D.C. While 95 gets south for Richmond, which is absolutely correct. And here I'm in Virginia Highway 208, Virginia T Highway 208, and guess what Virginia 208 is? But hey, I know this highway. Virginia Highway 208 is a state route in Virginia that is 48 miles long. It basically connects US 250 to US Highway 1. It lays entirely in Louisa and Spotsylvania counties, and it passes through the town of Spotsylvania Courthouse through its business route. And on its business route, you can actually find the snack shack right next to the middle school. Some major intersections on Virginia 208 include US 250, US 33, US 522, US 1, and Virginia 22. That's a little bit for Virginia 208, and let's get on to US 1. And shortly after, we're meeting Virginia Highway 3, which is a major route in here in Virginia. As we pass through Fredericksburg, we're actually passing right through the University of Mary Washington campus here. Here we're crossing over the Rappahannock River and entering into Stafford County. In our first junction in Stafford County, we get US 17 Business, which takes you over to Interstate 95 and US 17. But we're going to be staying on US 1 North. Our next mileage time, we just get Washington on the bottom line at 50 miles away. And here is secondary route 8900, which takes you over to the Stafford County Airport. And the weird thing about it is that this bridge over here, so it takes a curve around and then goes over US-1. And here is the National Museum of the Marine Corps. I never got to go there, but apparently my mom and brother did. And we get another exit request by Quarter Monch 437. He wanted to see Virginia Highway 123. So thank you for suggesting that highway. And now we get a pull through for Interstate 95 and US 1. And US 1 is just signed north for Lorton and Fort Bolivior. I think it should be Fort Bolivior and Alexandria. And we get another exit request made by Quarter Monch 437. He wanted to see Lorton Road here in Lorton, Virginia. Now we're meeting the Capitol Beltway and US-1 is signed north for Alexandria. And while the B Capitol Beltway gets Baltimore and Richmond and to Interstate 295, which I actually did a video on and if you want to check it out, it's right up here in the top right corner. Now we're meeting Virginia 233, which actually takes you to Reagan National Airport. And I actually flew out of that airport, and I flew from Washington, D.C. all the way over to Chicago to visit my family who lives over in Chicago. And we have another extra request. This time it's made by Train Geography. He wanted to see the 23rd Street at Junction because I believe he stayed at this hotel right over here, just right next to US-1. Train Geography also wanted to see the 15th Street exit here in Alexandria, so thank you for suggesting this exit. Now we're going to be joining Interstate 395, and 395 and US-1 are going to be heading north to Washington. And as we cross over the Potomac into Washington, D.C., we can actually see the Washington Monument from all the way over here. And that ends US-1 northbound, and we're going to be talking about southbound US-1. So we begin here at, in Washington, D.C., and we're going to be joining Interstate 395, which is signed South for Richmond, which is absolutely correct. And here is US-1 splitting off from Interstate 395, and it's signed South for Pentagon City, Crystal City, and Alexandria. I know about Alexandria, but I don't know the other two cities. Here is downtown Alexandria, which actually looks pretty cool. And now we're meeting the Capitol Beltway once again, which is signed west for Richmond and east for Baltimore. And US-1 gets signed south for Fort Bolivar. 
which I believe is a good choice because Fort Bolivia is a military place and military places should be signed on US highways because I believe that's what the highway system is for military purposes. And on our next mileage sign, we get Fort Bolivia on the top line at 7 miles away, Fredericksburg 43, and Richmond is almost 100 miles away from here. That's a long distance on the US highway. And we have another request made by Cordomon 437. He wanted to see Virginia Highway 286 because it's also known as the Fairfax County Parkway, which is a fairly important route here in Fairfax County, Virginia. And it takes you over to Interstate 95, so thank you for suggesting this highway. And we jumped all the way down to Fredericksburg. We're going to be joining US 17 Business, and we're actually going to be heading through downtown Fredericksburg, which I've actually visited at. Here is downtown Fredericksburg, which is actually pretty cool. Here is the Fredericksburg train station, and US 1 Business is actually going to be turning it right here. Totally up the road, we're now meeting Virginia Highway 3. Now we're in Virginia 208 once again, and if you head straight on Virginia 208 here, it actually takes you to this Dairy Queen right over here, which I've actually been to many times when I lived up in the Fredericksburg area. But we're going to be turning right onto US 1 South here. Now we're meeting Interstate 95 once again, and it's signed south for Richmond and north for Washington. And this is where US 17 is going to be joining US 1 to head southwest. Here's the split with the US 17, and right over here is a Wawa. And we jumped all the way down to Ashland, Virginia, where we're meeting Virginia Highway 54. And now we're meeting Interstate 295 once again, and it's signed for Charlottesville and Norfolk and Rocky Mount, like it was going the other direction on US 1. And here in the Richmond area, US 1 gets actually its own plaque with a, a 1. And it's a historic route, so that's cool. I did not know that it was a 1 before when I took this picture. Now I'm joining US 301 and US 1 and 301 are going to be turning with each other as we head through downtown Richmond. Here I'm meeting Interstate 95 and Interstate 64 once again. And here is US 250 here in downtown Richmond. And once we get out of downtown Richmond, we just get a mileage sign for US 301. What? Again, where did US 1 go? Because US 301 does not go to any of those places. But we do get Raleigh on the bottom line, which is 151 miles away. Wow, Virginia, you're signing North Carolina capital from your own capital. That's very cool of you. And here is Virginia Highway 288 once again. And I skipped all the way down where US 1 becomes its own road again. And we're meeting Interstate 85 and it's signed south for Durham, which is absolutely correct. But sadly, US 1 does not get its own control city. And here we are at that business US 460 junction once again. And you know how we saw earlier that Raleigh was on the bottom line for a mileage sign? Well, apparently Virginia is not sticking with that and signing US 1 South for Dinwiddie. Do you know where Dinwiddie, Virginia is? Well, apparently it's along US 1, and guess how many people it has? 620 people! So why is Virginia signing a 600 person place on you a major US highway route? No, Virginia, that should be South Hill or Raleigh, not Dinwiddie. You get this, Virginia. Here are one of these small places along the US-1 corridor, I meaning Virginia Highway 40. And south of South Hill, we're merging into US-58, and US-1 and 58 are going to be up with each other for a small time. And here is US-1 splitting off from US-58, as US-58 heads west towards the Appalachian Mountains in Virginia, while US-1 continues south towards Raleigh. Shortly later, we're entering into the state of North Carolina once again. Now we're meeting Interstate 85 in North Carolina. And what did North Carolina do? We were signed Raleigh for who knows how long in Virginia. And our first mileage time in 
North Carolina is Henderson on the bottom line. Why North Carolina? Now, now here is US 401 leaving US 1 to head south towards Raleigh. And US 158 is joining us now as we head towards Henderson. But it looks like Raleigh is back on US 1 because we get Raleigh on the bottom line from 59 miles away. Well, it should have been on that first mileage sign when we first entered in North Carolina. Here is US 1 splitting off from US 158. Now we're meeting Interstate 540 in Northern Raleigh. And 540 is signed West Fort Durham, which is absolutely correct. Now we're meeting Interstate 440 and we're signed South Fort Sanford. While 440 is signed East Fort Rocky Mount. Okay. Now we're meeting Interstate 40 once again, and this time going west on 440, we just get 40 East for Benson. No Wilmington, just Benson. What are you doing, North Carolina? That should be Wilmington. Also, 40 West is still signed for RDU Airport and Durham. Now, now we're meeting overhead sign for US 1 and 64, which is signed Southwest for Apex, Sanford, and Ashboro. And if you take exit 101A here, it takes you to a cookout, which is one of the greatest places to get shakes because their shakes are so good. Here is US 64 splitting off from US 1, and we can see all the way in the distance that US 1 is still signed south for Sanford. And Sanford is on the bottom line at 34 miles away. And this exit here, exit 95, is my exit for North Carolina 55, which takes you to Holly Springs and Fuquay. But we're going to be taking it to follow 55 towards Apex and go through historic US 1. Here is the closer view of the intersection. We're going to be turning west onto 55. And this here is South Salem Street. If you take a right on to the street, it takes you in downtown Apex. But we're going to be taking a left to follow all the US 1. And here is North Carolina Highway 540, which is signed for Holly Springs and Perry, which I believe are good choices. And here is, again, the road to South Point Mall and Jordan Lake. And now we're meeting the current US-1, which is signed for Raleigh and Sanford, and we're going to be hopping back onto US-1 here. Now we're meeting US-421 once again, and it's signed North Fort Tyler City and Greensboro and South Fort Wellington. And on US-421, US-1 is signed South Fort Southern Pines, which is a so-so city. I don't know what's better than Southern Pines, but at least it's something instead of nothing. And here's the exit for downtown Sanford, which I've actually been to. Sadly, North Carolina is not telling the, us this is the exit for downtown Sanford. And if we follow US 421 business, we actually need US 1 business, which if you take a left here, it'll take you to downtown Sanford, which I've actually been to and took a, a picture of US 1 business in Sanford. But if you take a right here, it'll take you over to Fairview Dairy Bar, which I've actually also been to, which is a very good place in Sanford, and I recommend visiting it if you ever go to Sanford. And here on North Carolina 42, we're meeting US-1, and US-1 is signed South for Southern Pines, which I, again is a so-so city. I don't know what could be better. You can debate me in the comments down there below. And here is US-15-501 splitting off from US-1, and it's signed for Pinehurst and Carthage. Now we're meeting North Carolina 24 and 27 once again. Now we're meeting US 220 here in Rockingham. And we just hit a 274 and US 1 South sign. Now we're meeting US 74 once again. And like I said earlier, this is also Interstate 74. Well, it's better for them, for North Carolina, not to sign it as Interstate 74. And after we leave Rockingham, we enter into the state of South Carolina. And South Carolina actually welcomes us, so thank you, South Carolina. And with that, we end US 1 in North Carolina, Virginia, and move on to, oh, the places you'll go on North Carolina 1 in Virginia. So here's, I'm doing actually something a bit different. I'm going to be recommending places that you guys should visit if you ever come to Raleigh or Fredericksburg. 
places. This is one of the places that I recommend on US1 itself. I'd actually recommend downtown Sanford and the Fairview Dairy Bar. And then actually downtown Apex. It's quite a small, cool looking town. And then downtown Cary. And then Crossroad Shopping Center if you love to shop. Again with the Crabtree Valley Mall, the same reason if you like to shop. And then the Mac House in Wake Forest, which I, I've actually been to. And if you like mac and cheese, that place is for you. And then the Interstate 85's Davis Travel Plaza. And then downtown Fredericksburg. And then the Dairy Queen off of Virginia 208. And then the Reagan National Airport. And then finally, the territory of Washington, D.C. itself. And that ends US 1 on North Carolina and Virginia. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of US 1 in North Carolina and Virginia. I hope you guys learned something new about US 1 in those two states. And I actually recommend checking out those places that I listed along the video. So with that, my next couple of highways include US 58, which is going to be coming out soon. And then the special gimmick video, which I actually posted a community post about. And finally after that, I'm going to be finally starting the long-awaited Super 200, which is Idaho 200, Montana 200, North Dakota 200, and Minnesota 200, just the eastbound portion. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see y'all in the next one.